Welcome to Musician Profiles Celebrating Racial Diversity through the International Conference of Symphony and Opera Musicians, otherwise known as ICSOM. My name is Doug Rosenthal, and I'm the Associate Principal Trombonist with the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, and I'm joined today by Fatima Landa Velasquez, who is an oboist and studying at the Boston University Tanglewood Institute, which is Tanglewood being the summer home of the Boston Symphony. Uh, Fatima is the recipient of the 2024 ICSAM BUTI scholarship. Fatima, it is so good to be with you. Thank you so much for the invitation. I am so honored for that. Of course. Um, well, let's let's start with uh, where you're from. Where, where you know where where are you joining us from? Okay, um, I am from Jalapa. It's like a town in Veracruz, Mexico. Um, very, very close to the Gulf of Mexico, five hours from Mexico City. Great. And uh, where will you be in the fall? Okay, I'm going to Curtis Institute of Music, and I am so glad for that. Yes, um, a lot of the faculty uh, from there is in the Philadelphia Orchestra uh, and a couple in the Pittsburgh Symphony. Uh, who will you be studying with? With Catherine Niedemann and Mr. Philip Tondra. Okay, uh, and uh, Catherine is from the Baltimore Symphony and Philippe is from the Philadelphia Orchestra, both Ixam orchestras. Um, and uh, when did you start learning the oboe? Um, I was starting to learn oboe when I was 11, but this was um, fine because I actually started with the piano when I was four. And then I used to experiment with a few instruments. And finally, I get my instrument at 11, like the oboe. I was like, I want to do this the rest of my life. <laughs> so, so you started with piano at four. Uh, yeah. And then what other instruments were between piano and oboe? I basically tried it with violin, with flute, with percussion, and with classic guitar. <laughs> okay, but then you arrived at the oboe, and how? what inspired you to start with the oboe? Um, well, I was playing principal violin in a youth orchestra. Um, then I just was like, oh, wait, actually, we need an instrument. Like, you know, that was never are in the youth orchestras in Mexico. Um, so I just was like, I want to play oboe. And then a girl came with me and was like, I want to play saxophone, but the conductor told me that I can do it before someone wants to take the oboe. And I was like, oh, it's my opportunity. So I remember <laughs> that I was 10 years old, almost 11. And I just went with the conductor and was like, please, can I take the oboe? And he was like, no, we don't have oboe professors here. And I was like, please take on the oboe. And I remember that I was a very, very resilient girl. So I just went to his office every single day, five times per week for six months. And after that, he was like, here is your oboe. <laughs> five times a week for six months, you yeah. said, I want to play the oboe. Yeah. And finally, finally, he yeah. said yes. What... um. Was it, uh, was he tired of saying no? Did your teacher find someone who could, you know, teach uh, you? Yeah, okay, so this is like, uh, in this Euro orchestra, they use, had like the instrument, but they used to have like string professors, but they never had like a oboe player professor or something like that. So he was like, we have a plastic oboe that you can use and play with that, but we don't have someone that actually can make reads for you or teach you oboe. And I was like, it's not a problem. So then I remember that I went with my parents and I was like, I pick up the oboe. And my father was like, no, it's not the way. And then he was like, <laughs> why about bassoon? Because actually they had a bassoon professor, but not an oboe professor. And I was like, no, I want the oboe. And then I remember that I just went to the Jalapa Symphony Orchestra and my old first oboe teacher was playing that. And I remember that I told my dad, I want to learn oboe with her. And he was like, but it could be like expensive or something. But then uh, my dad find her contact. And I remember the first time was a Saturday. I was extremely excited for that. And um, actually, I make like plastic weeds with the poops that you put in your drink to drink soda and such things. 
because <laughs> I was so desperate to play oboe. And actually, wow. it works in the oboe. It sounds like very bad, but I was, you know, making a sound. So the first time that I saw my first oboe teacher, she just was like, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually give you real reads. Uh, so then my father just goes like, oh no. And then when I was in home, I used to starting to play the whole day, every single day, because I just love it. Wow. Wow. So you made your own reads out of plastic straws because and, and because that was the only option your teacher couldn't find plastic reeds or real reeds no, no, no. or okay so between i had the oboe and i find the professor it was like another three or four months just with an elbow but with other reeds so um i didn't was like it wasn't normally for me amazon or things or ebay so i was like I was in the kitchen and I was like, betray me. Well, I can put as a read. And I just saw that and I was like, go ahead. And then I used take a scissors, I curl as a triangle, and then it makes sounds. So I was like, okay, let's go to use push a little bit, a tip, like a real read. And then works. So I just play with that. Um so you were I able to fit it into the oboe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, so your 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 first teacher then was in the symphony. Yeah, but uh, she retired a lot of years ago. Um she actually is um from Boston. Uh then she played in Jalapa Symphony Orchestra for I think three, five years, something like that. And then she was like, I I cannot teach anymore because I want to retire and everything and stuff. Mm. She's so I see. I see. Uh, and what what was it about the oboe that was it the sound? Was it the the melodies that you get to play? Okay. Um. Basically, I just listen a lot of oboe concertos, and I remember that before I can play, I just was like, I love the sound. I love everything. But then when I starting to play the oboe in the beginning. I remember that I used to put like very fancy oboes on YouTube and I used to stand in my bed and I was like, imagine that I was playing with a very fancy big orchestra and I was like, yeah, I am the best. And my brother just got like, I am trying to sleep. Come on, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's, I, I also used to bother my family with music. So we, yeah. we have that in common. <laughs> Um, so, um, when, uh, when did you know that you wanted to go to school for music and, you know, really focus your life on the oboe? Okay. I think that I really know that I want to be a musician when I was so young, but I was like, I want to play in orchestra. Like I was like nine or 10 years old. Um, but I don't want to be a pianist. I don't want to be a violinist. So I need to find my instrument. And then was the oboe. And I remember the first time that actually I take a real read, oboe read, and I used to play C major or something like that. I, you know, automatically I just imagine like playing the oboe as a soloist or playing very good solos like Mahler or something like that in orchestras. And I was like, wow, I really want to do this the rest of my life. And then I just make sure of that and double check one day when I was sick and I couldn't practice. So actually I used to start to feel so bad just for not practice because I love my oboe. So it was like, I want to do this the rest of my life or my life going to be no happy life. Wow. Well, so, you yeah. know, that's, that. I, I, I understand I being you know, not being able to play and being like, oh, this is what I want to do. <laughs> so, yeah. um, well, that's that's great. And um, uh, obviously you'll be doing a lot of playing uh, when you get to Curtis in the fall. Um, how did you hear about uh, this scholarship? Again, uh, Fatima is the recipient of the 2024 ICSAM 
B-U-T-I scholarship. Uh, that's a lot of letters. <laughs> um, so tell us how you heard about it. Okay, so basically in my free time, I am like a person that loves to read articles about everything. Um, because I think that is a very good way to keep your brain working and actually learn new things. So I remember that I was trying to find, I don't remember exactly what team, but I used um, a, period, a website that is Senza Sordino with an amazing article that told about change the difficulties in the war for people that don't have the source or that come from very difficult you know, situations and everything and stuff. And it was so impressive for that. I was like, wow, uh, I really want to do it one day. And um, yeah, I remember that you was like, it's going to be so cool if I can do one day this. And then this year just happened. So I actually am in shock. It's just like, you expect one thing, one day to dream with that. And then just happen. It's just like, wow. Wow. Um... I, I find it so fascinating. And for people who are watching who don't know, Senza Sordino is the newsletter of Ixam. Um, and the audience of Ixam is usually people who are members of those orchestras. Um, but the fact that you found it, yeah, you were just online looking for whatever related to the yeah. oboe and studying, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah this is a team. I basically... Um find a team on the internet that is curious like I don't know one day I just have free time and I am like oh how many women playing this orchestra comparative with the men's and those things and mm -hmm. then I just get a little bit of information and then I just keep going and keep going and keep going uh, so you just need a topic and then you have like a whole world to read or to find and, and it's so exciting when you find something like this article wow uh, that, that's great. I'm 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 loving these stories of. I mean, you're you're unstoppable. Um, you were going to play the oboe, and you are going to play the oboe, and you're gonna do all this research. And I, I just I'm so I find it so uh, admirable and inspiring. Um, so uh, well, excellent. Um, what what is it like to study at BUTI? Oh, okay. So um. We have master class, but also we have a lot of concerts that we are playing in the concerts, but also VSO concerts, faculty concerts. So it's actually so balanced. Like you have enough time for practice, eat, make friends, um, practice more, make reads, and go to concerts. So I think that is really important, especially for music students like um go and say like okay i am working for that but this is going to be my future so can listen um the professors and everything and stuff or just a symphony orchestra can be like oh okay i am going well or i can take this or i can change this or i can take this new idea so actually it's right about that and of course you can do hiking or play frisbee in your free time because also rest is important but you know, keep practicing, work hard, and it will dream, you know, everything and do laundry. So actually it's very, very nice. Great. So things are scheduled in a way where you can do all the learning and playing that you want to do. Yeah. But you're also enjoying, I mean, just being in the Berkshire Mountains. Uh, yeah. It's like, so beautiful out there. Yeah. Every day that I just wake up, I just see the windows and it's like wow and then i used to start in my day so happy because if you are having like you know like to read is not good or something just go and see the sky i'm going to be so good yeah um i i don't know if anyone's told you yet but um that part of the united states is where a lot of artists have um done their work like especially like in the 1800s there were a lot of authors uh, dancers, composers. Do do you know about the history? Yeah, I found it. Oh, you? Of course, you did. <laughs> you would. You could probably teach all of us more <laughs> just from all your reading <laughs> than, than what we've. Uh, no, learned. it's just like I really like to um, know where I am. So I like to find the history of the house that I close to Butiai and also the people, the musicians. 
like a lot of musicians actually trust Leonard Bernstein, like jazz musician, pop musician, classical musician. So, and actually we have like Julia Wang two weeks ago or three. So it's just like, you can read and say like, wow, the principal um, player in this orchestra went to Butia in this year. Um, the principal conductor in this big orchestra in Europe also went to UTI when he was a child. So it's just like a lot of history that is so impressive. And that is like, wow, I am here. It's, it's so impressive. Like, well, I, uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're unstoppable. So it, it only makes sense that you're there. Um, well, that, that that's great. And uh, do you have any, of all these experiences that you've been talking about, do you have any favorite? concerts or um outside activities anything so far this summer it's a very very hard question mm, i think that i can't pick up a favorite because i have a lot of moments that actually teach me a lot of things like personal things but also music things um so i yeah i don't have a favorite because i was everything is my favorite <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, what is, um, because most of the people watching this will be classical musicians, uh, what's some of the repertoire that you've played that you've really enjoyed? Okay, as a chamber musician or as a soloist? Anything. Anything that comes to mind. Okay, so I am so excited for playing Mahler 5 because I love Mahler. is one of my favorite composers. Uh, but I also love to play some more music and contemporary music, especially if it's writing by women. Um, so, so oh, I'm 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 sorry to interrupt you. When you say summer music, you said summer music. Oh yeah, the, the piece by Samuel Barber. Yeah. Okay, I I just for people listening, I oh, wanted to make sorry. sure. That... <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Please continue. Oh, it's fine. Um, so yeah, I played summer music in the first two weeks for. When we went um, it was an amazing experience. Um, we are playing at Deck Deck next week, so it's going to be so fun. But also, like my favorite favorite piece right now for the elbow, probably Stranis Nikova, fine for elbow and piano. I really love this piece so much. It's for elbow and piano. But it's oh wow! So, yeah. Is it is it do you, is it the melodies? Is it the the sound? What 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 appeals to you most about this piece? Okay, so um, Marina Ronisikova was a composer um, and a pianist. So she wrote this piece for a very dramatic love history. Like she was in love of one of it didn't work. And then she wrote an amazing piece. Um, so I just think that she really, really represent a lot of emotions in the melody, uh, but also it's like the harmony the sounds like she actually knows so well how to work the oboe when she was a pianist. So I I think that yeah, she's just amazing. Hmm. Well, that's great. And are you going to be able to play that on a recital? Have you already performed that on a recital? Uh yeah, I've been uh for my master class that and yeah, probably oh, great. Gonna... <laughs> great, yeah. great. Uh oh, and who was who uh led that master class? Um, was Mr. McEwen, the um, ah. oboe of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Yes. He had a um, master class with the BSO members as Sabuti students. Yeah. Great. That's, that sounds like you're having a terrific summer. Um, and uh, so we've talked about what your experiences have been so far. Um, what have you learned so far with oboe and music? What, you know, what topics come to mind? Okay, this is another hard question. I have a list of that in my notes. Um, but I think that if I need a reason of that, like the most important things is like um, appreciate yourself, um, work hard. Sometimes we are just like, I need, I need this, 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 but we are like making progress. So we actually need to say, okay, this, is you know better than yesterday and this need to practice more um and also feel so grateful for the people that is around you and that love you um yeah i think that this is like my best resume about my notes 
Oh, wow. So, so um, you're learning how to practice, you're learning, you're getting these great experiences with uh, having support from the people around you. Yeah. That's, I'm so happy to hear that. That's so <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's so wonderful. Well, Fatima, it's been so lovely to uh, speak with you. Um, before we go, is there anything else you want to add? Anyone you want to say hello to? Um, uh, you know, any anything else you'd like to say about BUTI, about your experience, anything at all? Oh, well, um, I wish this is important, like, yeah, okay, so actually uh, going, um, my best advice for everyone is going to a professor that inspire you to be a better person and musician. So I just want to say hey uh, to my other teacher, uh, Miss Catherine Niederman, and also Miss Valerie Coleman, because both are amazing women's composers, players, and persons. And I think that they are working so hard to change the classic world and make them more equal. And my other teacher always inspired me to want to be and work hard in myself to be a better always put a better person and also like change this world and you know make more opportunities for everyone she wrote articles and everything and stuff so um go and subscribe also to my other teacher website it's so good <laughs> i love that i love that I, I i think it's so wonderful that you have all these um all these people in your life that are you know, just lifting you up and they speaking to you and nurturing you and um, well, that's that's fantastic. And anything else before we sign off? Um. Okay. So um. Yeah. If you have a question about what is booty eye or something, I just can say that definitely um, it's a very big opportunity to make like before and after in your life because you learn a lot of things as a musician here, but also as a person that you're going to use in your future. And that actually changes your life a lot. And you're going to make friends probably for the rest of your life or something like that. So I was that if you're looking for a summer program, you definitely should apply for UTI. Hmm. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm so thrilled you're having this wonderful summer. Um, it's been so nice to chat with you, Fatima. Oh, thank you. And thank all of you who are watching for joining us. Um, again, this has been Ixam's monthly video series, Musician Profiles Celebrating Racial Diversity. Be well. Yeah.